this game is so much fun. I'm enjoying it so much. I, I just thought of like two different things uh, between in my short break between the last stream and this one. Um, the first of which about how in the openings, right? The, the opening little scene things, the, the autobiography written by Sherlock. Not really, we're like, the, 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 you know what I mean, the Sherlock stories, there we go. Um, of course, in, in the normal Sherlock Holmes world, real Sherlock Holmes world, Arthur Conan Doyle show, not Sherlock Holmes world, Dr. Watson wrote the stories, and the stories were accurate, they were real to a good enough extent. Whereas, I just realised that those stories written by Watson actually exist in this universe, in a sense, but, one, they are, like, greatly embellished and, like, highly not actually accurate to what happened, and, two, they're not actually written by Watson, they're wi written by a little girl pretending to be Watson. The, the little girl presumably being the daughter of Dr. Watson. So another Dr. Watson that's the daughter of Dr. Watson. But of course, in this game, they're Wilson because game. And also, it isn't even the real Sherlock Holmes. No, 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 no. It's, um, it's Herlock Holmes, the, the famous um, French uh, written detective uh, in the Arsène Lupin stories. But, and then the other thing I noticed was that how cool the summation examination is. Because one of the big like writing glutts one of like the such a repetitive thing about Ace Attorney is that it just follows such a formula of the trials. It's like, oh, here's a cross examination. Oh, it's a hopeless situation. What will we ever do to get out of this? Oh, wow, an amazing piece of evidence turns the case around. Oh, oh no, it seems we've, we've hit another crisis again. And then it just like a loop over and over again. But introducing this gives a new dimension, a new avenue with which to play with those situations. Um, I don't know, it, it's very good. I, I'm, I'm very interested to see just how much it gets used. Um, I was under the impression that it was once per trial, but who knows. I'm not sure if I'm going to get through this trial in this stream. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to keep it to like an hour-ish, but you know, who knows, who, maybe I will have eaten my words. And, for you in the future, it will be as easy as to look at the timestamp on the bottom. Right now, but, um, and I probably have. Um, but yeah, let, let's get straight back to it. exactly where we left off with this highly zoomed in picture of Van Zyke's. So, let us proceed to the next round of battle. Bring forth the witnesses once more. Witnesses! Trust you've heard the summation examination we have just had to. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, sir. No, I did, sir. I'm a banker. Yeah, I'm a banker. Of course I've heard it. Oh, yes, sir. I heard it. You, sir, on the end. The coachman. I believe it's Beppo. Yes, sir. It's my lord, is it? My lord, my lord, sir. It transpires then, that in your previous testimony that you were attempting to veil the presence of a fifth passenger on your omnibus, you will be found guilty of perjury. You are advised to bear that in mind, sir. Uh, Oh my Joe! Oh my Joe, or is it Dio? Oh my G Oh Mio Gio! Oh Mio Gio! Okay, whatever. Now then, witnesses, I hereby call on you all to testify before the court again. You will explain the various misgivings brought to our attention by the defence's summation examination. Yeah. An absolute banker. I I only carried four passengers that night. I swear it. But, but um. Well, four 
everyone was told that I had to buy five pence. Uh, five pence for the bus. He fiddled on the fairy, did. And then I saw that blood curdling sight as well. It's all too much. I tell you, I saw the gentleman stabbing that man. Everything I said before stabbed. Oh, yes, he, yes, he just stabbed him. Yes, he did. I, I think so, yes. Council, make sense of this for me, please. The phantom fifth passenger conjured into existence by my learned Eastern friend never existed. Confusion has arisen from the coachman's sly little cousinage. Uh, Beppo, explain yourself. I I'm terribly sorry, Guild Master. The Guild's fare is fourpence across the board. You know that. Am I to understand that you've been overcharging our passengers by a penny a fare? It's, it's so cold, and the last run of the day is always uh, half empty. You have been dishonest, Coachman. Uh, I'm sorry. You're a disgrace, Beppo, a disgrace. Your selfish actions have brought dishonour to the entire guild. If I may, sir, I had to pay tenpence on the bus just last week. What? <laughs> Four passengers at five pence each is... Yes, twenty pence. I've done the arithmetic ten times already, but I just can't make the result come out differently. No, that's... figures. No, no that... figures. Well, it would appear that one of the aforementioned misgivings has already been explained. So, counsel for the defence, or cross-examination, if you please. We've already had the pleasure of a protracted summation examination already today. I see you intend to continue the parlour games. Absolutely! <laughs> Absolutely! Not no witty comeback. How very Japanese of No no quip or Various misgivings. I, I only carried four passengers that night. I swear it. But, but um, well, I for one was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. Hold it! Hold it! So there are only four passengers on your carriage. But you didn't charge them the standard four pence fare. Is that right? It's, it's impossible to make the last run of the day pay. I was so cold, it was all I could do to stop myself from passing out. Getting chilled blames just listening to you. I was terrible, so I wanted to give myself a pat on the back for even keeping the bus running. Doesn't a dedicated coachman deserve an extra penny passenger? Pick up a penguin. You're digging a deeper hole for yourself here. If only there had been a fifth passenger on the omnibus that night. Then we would have another suspect. Every time he says ellipses, I'm just gonna go. Hmm. No. Oh. Well, I for one was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. Hold it! Hold it! Does that mean everyone on the bus that night paid five pence instead of four? Well, I paid five pence too, sir. I just told you that I did. Wait, four passengers? Oh, the, the victim as well. A, a flat fare of five pence across the board. It's not something to be proud of. The so called discrepancy my learned friend identified was nothing at all. <laughs> Much like the phantom killing you so desperately, it's gone, dead and buried. It'd have been 
happy if it had ever existed in the first place. Somebody was hiding in that fucking seat, I swear. It's like, it just... It's so suspicious and just so, like, convenient that someone would be hiding in there. Right? Like, come on. <laughs> he fiddled us the fair, he did. And then I saw that blood curdling sight as well. He saw too much. Hold it! Hold it. This blood curdling sight? You mean the murder, I presume? <laughs> yes, sir. But what the fuck else could you be referring to? Loathsome sight. No one should have to witness the horror in the eyes of a man the moment his life is taken. Oh, uh, well, not exactly, sir. I mean, I didn't actually see the exact moment that Dem was stabbed. Good gracious! Really? We have another witness who did, however. The banker has already testified. Mr. First didn't actually see the point at which the victim was killed. That may turn out to be very significant. I heard the banker gent next to me take a sharp intake of breath, see? That's when I looked through the glass. That's, that's when I saw that horrible blade poking out from his belly, all covered in blood. Every time I see a knife now, I can't help screaming, even when I'm eating. I tell you, I saw McGillan stabbing that man. Everything I said before stands. I mean, this guy has a motive to perjure in that he's also a banker. Maybe this banker is also on his list. <gasps> I haven't read the evidence yet. I haven't looked at this even. Wow. I'm behind. That part is the sheath, isn't it? You're all right, Mr. Narahodo. Mm. Oh, sorry. Yes, I just don't really like blades. Oh, those don't seem like the words of a man with a large katana slung from his waist. That's not a blade. That's Kazuma's soul. Anyway, there's no sense in delaying it. Let's see what the blade looks like. I want to highlight that there's no blood on the handle, please. Dun, dun, da, 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 da. Ugh, that looks a lot like blood. It surely is blood. The victims. Ugh, Englishman's blood looks like a lot. <laughs> Ugh, Englishman's blood looks like a lot like a Japanese man's blood. You think it wouldn't? Sorry, it's just that we've only just arrived here in Great Britain. I think it's a little hard to adjust. Yes, I do understand. Oh, we need to look at the M. Where's the M? Where is the M? Oh, there's the M. An ornate, ornate letter M. Undeniably Mr. Magnus McGilded's initial. It's beautifully gilded too. It must be very valuable, I should think. Ah! What is it? Look at this M. You turn it upside down, it becomes a W. This could change everything. A W? Dabaru? Dabaru, 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 dabaru. Yes, this is one of those, you know, turnabout cases. I'm sure of it. I don't know at all. What I'm sure of is that that is an M. Oh, well that idea was quickly quashed. I, I agree with Naruhodo here. Why can't that be a W? Yeah. And? What would you have it? I have a witness with a W. Not here. I swear I saw a double you somewhere. I can't look at profiles? There's no profiles! Why are there no profiles? Okay. Maybe in this game you can't present profiles, but I can when I can read the court record. I tell you. The banker. Hmm. No. 
Now I tell you, I saw McGilded stabbing that man. Everything I said before stabbed. Hold it! Hold it! Have I read this before? So you saw the defendant, Mr. McGilded, stabbing the victim, Mr. Mason, who was sitting next to him. That's... that's what I said, isn't it? It's bothering me before, this was. For just a brief moment, he hesitated before answering the question. Anyway, there was only the two of them inside the carriage, wasn't there? There's been much talk of the fifth passenger, but as yet, zero evidence. Then what are we wasting all this time for, eh? It's black and white, the man's guilty. That's gonna flip a juror's mind, isn't it? Something about Mr. Fairplay's testimony just jars with me. I wish I could work out what it was. Oh, yes, yes, he stabbed him. Yes, he did. Oh, I think so, yes. Hold it! Hold it! Earlier, you testified that you saw the moment the defendant allegedly stabbed the victim, didn't you? Oh, yes, yes, that's right. You said that the victim was on the floor. Describe the assailant holding the knife in an ice pick grip. I, I suppose, I might have, you know, yes, but the car before the horse, maybe. What's this? Well, I'm quite sure about most of it. I was driving the horses when I heard a scream from, from the seat on the roof deck. Oh, I expect that was me, sir. Then when I t t turned around, yes, yes, I saw it through the skylight. The g gentleman was on the floor, and the knife was sticking up over his midriff. Okay, that's right, yes. And the f fellow holding the, the handle was the f famous man, yes. That's not good enough. He said he saw it through the... The, tall, the horses aren't that tall. He saw it from beneath. So, in short, you didn't see the moment when the victim was actually stabbed at all. I, I really thought that I did, but, but... But when I go over it again in my head... No, I suppose I didn't actually see the precise moment of the stabbing, did I? Stroke! I'm gonna do this press again. In, in fact, now that I c come to think of it, it, it m m must have already happened when I heard the scream. Ah, of course. That goes without saying. But I really wish he had said it earlier. Autopsy report makes it quite clear that the victim was stabbed only once, which means. The banker was witness to the fatal wound that ended Mr. Mason's life. Not long ago, this trial very nearly came to an end. Somehow, we've managed to keep our, ch our chances alive here. I can't waste this cross-examination. I have to use it to bring some new facts to light. Hmm. If you're so... If you're not careful when you press these witnesses... The danger is that the jury will end up believing something unhelpful as they did before. Maybe, but we can't let the fear of that happening stop us from uncovering important new information. Yes, you're so right. We need to pay careful attention here. I think I've fully s fixed Susato's voice now. It's not awful, and it isn't just random, like a girl voice, it's actually a Susato voice. I don't want to miss even a flicker of a reaction among the witnesses. Remember, if you happen to spot one of the witnesses reacting in a strange way, don't hesitate to pursue them votes to the reason. Oh, this is slow. There we go. Hold it! Earlier you testified. You said that you saw the vi oh, I'm quite sure. I turned around. Yes, it's a fellow. 
I really thought I did, but no, I suppose I didn't actually. Ruth, Strong. He says, "Excuse me," doesn't he? How does he say it? Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you have something to say about that, Mr. Fairplay? Now you listen to me. I'm a banker, and I know what you're thinking. Didn't really see the exact moment the fellow was stabbed. What are the chances of that? Hey? Are you asking me or telling me? He's getting flustered. I'd be able to extract some new information from him if I answer him cleverly. Do you have just happened to see the exact moment the crime was committed? No chance. Well, it is a little hard to believe, certainly. Unless you spend your time peeping through a skylight on the top of an omnibus, that is. Peeping? I, I'm a respectable city banker, I'll have you know. And I know what I saw. I remember it as clear as a Ballarat day. It was a grim scene, I don't mind telling you. Thank you, Mr. Fairplay. What he actually saw was the victim touching as he said he did. Oh, excuse me if I was getting a little hot under the collar there, my lord. I would ask that you supplement your testimony with a clear statement about what, you, what exactly you saw. Oh, I can do that all right. And I'll tell you just how grim it was. Do you think I'd forget the sight of those blood-soaked hands after that butcher stabbed the man? The knife has no blood on it. Hold it! Hold it! Blood-soaked? Ahem. <clears throat> well, uh, perhaps soaked is laying it on a little thick, but... But anyway, there was definitely blood all over them. Both of them were covered in it. You saw that from the roof, through the skylight. Well, the skylight's reasonably large, so I had a pretty good view. And there was a lamp inside the carriage as well, so I'm quite sure of what I saw. It's all. Hmm. It's Banker's latest statement. You're sure there's something not quite right about it? That's the lamp, I guess. It was night. It's quite a large skylight, isn't it? Yes. Quite large enough to afford a good view into the cabin from the roof deck. That doesn't appear to be a handle or catch of any description. I suppose it can't be open from inside the cabin, at least. There is the lamp, there is the lamp. I want to examine the lamp. I cannot examine the lamp, only the poster. The a lamp on one side. Why is there only a lamp on this side of the cabin? I have no idea. That is very strange, I would say myself. And you feel something doesn't add up, Mr. Narahodo. That's when you should have a good look through the court record. Long ago, this trial very nearly came to an end, and I've already read this. It is the new statement which is wrong, because that's always the way these games do their thing. Always the new statement is the weird one. Objection! Oh, 
Wrong button. <laughs> Objection. Objection. Blood soaked hands. Well, I admit that soaked might be laying it on a little thick, but. But anyway, there was definitely blood all over them. Both of them were covered in it. Well, I'm very sure. I'm very sorry to disagree, Mr. Fairplay. That's a little more than peculiar. I like how the samurai swords are used as a, a, a place to put your hand, a leaning space. I think that's quite fashionable. What? Here are the gloves worn by the defendant, Mr. McGilded, on the night in question. Oh, yes, right. There certainly does appear to be a sizable dark coloured st stain there. But as I'm sure you can clearly see, it's only on the right hand glove. Ah! No teeth left. No wonder the British have such bad teeth. In short, Mr. Fairplay, your testimony is inconsistent. Yeah. But, but, no, that can't be right. So you're the liar here, then. Grr. That's right. You were quite clear about it. You said, yeah. It was both hands. Mr. Fairplay, if your last statement was a lie, it caused your entire testimony into question. You say you saw the victim the, the You say you saw the moment the victim was stabbed, but is that really the truth? Ah, uh, I well I Objection! Objection! It was a simple mistake. You can't justify accusing this man of lying. Yes, it wasn't both hands. It was only one. But the fact remains... Hm. The victim's blood was on the accused. Objection! Objection! No! Mr. Fairplay categorically stated that he saw blood all over both hands. Which means there's a strong possibility that this witness was deliberately trying to mislead the court. Grrr. Why? Why? I'm a city banker, for pity's sake! My word should be the gold standard. I'm a gentleman, not some gutter snipe. Upstanding members of society don't prevariate. Prevaricate. Oh, that's a word that I haven't heard before. Pre prevaricate. Pre. So, like, before. Verify something before it happens. I don't know. He, he's claiming he to have no reason to lie. Is that really the case? Oh yeah, I didn't act I said I was gonna read the evidence, but I never actually did, did I? This portfolio must contain all sorts of secrets from London's gentry. Oh dear! You really thought we looked at ought to look inside? Well, it's not as though we know any of London's gentry. Apart from our great detective friend, perhaps. I can't read that. Oh my god, I'm gonna do this again. Actually, I wonder. I assure you will not find Mr. Ho Sholmes' name inside. Well, let's see what we find. I wonder if Mr. Sholmes is in the gallery of this trial. Close it, please. I want to read that again. Not as though we know any of London's gentry personally, is it? Apart from our... Gosh, it's crammed full of gentlemen's names, isn't it? Oh, I suppose they're probably not all gentlemen at all, are they? The rule, not everyone in this country is well off. Ah, goodness! What is it? Look at this! Do you see this name here? Bruce Fairplay. Should that mean something to me? It does sound strangely familiar, actually. Bruce Fairplay, the witness testifying at this very moment. Oh, yes, of course. A banker. Why is his name in here? 
Ah, he borrowed 20 guineas, did he? And look, the repayment date is fast approaching. It's possible that this is just a coincidence, it, that this is just a coincidence, of course. But this could be very useful information. Oh yeah, I was going to check profiles. To Satomi Kotaba. Male Strongheart. I do wonder. I feel like it's too obvious that this guy will be shady. But at the same time... To have him not be a little bit shady would be weird. I think... May, he may be will play a slight more he will come up oh, he'll come up again in case four but then he'll actually be relevant in case five I think or something like that that's my guess anyway oh Magnus Mikkel did <laughs> Barak Van Zyks where's my name Van like some sort of European. Thrice fired Mason. Oh, maybe he was fired thrice. Like fired. You're fired. Little fire. Oh. Drive the omnibus. Beppo. Banker. Bruce Fairplay. Lady first! Mr. Naruhodo! We had some evidence to explain why Mr. Fairpain might be lying. It could turn the tide in this trial completely. It's something to show that this man has a compelling reason to lie in his testimony. No! I clicked the wrong button! Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Yes, if only we had some evidence like that. Hmm. So the defense has nothing. Whew. Ah, Mr. Naruhodo! Did you see that? Yes, he let out an audible sigh of relief. Does that mean there is some evidence that show that would show why he might lie? I think perhaps we should consult the court record again. In Mr. Fairplay's reaction, I wonder if there's some evidence we haven't probably properly examined yet. Yes, we ought to look at everything in as much detail as possible. My lord! Yes, Count Rule. The defense is ready to present evidence. Evidence that will clearly demonstrate why Mr. Fairplay had a reason to lie in his testimony. I'm afraid, Count Rule, that before I can allow that to happen, I shall have to... <laughs> Penalize you for that reckless about turn. Oh, <laughs> I was hoping I'd get away with that. Ugh, I suppose that's fair play. Very well. I hereby call on the defense to present its evidence. The evidence that demonstrates a motive for the witness's alleged deception of the court. Take that! Take that! I'm telling you, it sounds normal. <laughs> Take that! This is a list of the debtors who owe money to Mr. McGilded. Yes, a list of innocent victims crippled by the accused's extortion. The point is, among the names of these debtors is your name, Mr. Bruce Fairplay. What? Mr. Fairplay, are you currently indebted financially to the accused? Ah, uh, no, well, it's, it's barely worthy of being called a debt. According to this ledger, you owe 20 guineas. Not an inconsiderable sum of money, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I have to look this show up. Guineas and pounds and pennies and...
pounds, shillings and pence. There are lots of colloquial names, obviously. Sixpence and crowns and bobs. Twelve pence in a shilling and twenty shillings in a pound. So what's a guinea? Okay. Wow, okay, this is complicated. Oh no, Lord. <laughs> this is so English, it's unbelievable. Pound, shillings and pence, actual minted coins, could represent one or several fractions of these. The penny was subdivided into four farthings until 1960. And two farthings is a half penny, or a penny. The perceived advantage of such a system was its use in some aspects of mental arithmetic. Yeah, because decimalization isn't good for mental arithmetic. As it afforded many factors, and hence fractions of a pound, as, yeah, but, I mean, dozen or, dozen all is one of those things, right? Why don't we use dozen all numbers? Hence, a sixth and even sevenths, sevenths and ninths of the guinea. So a guinea is worth 21 shillings. Whoa! So a guinea is worth just more, it's a pound and a shilling. Whoa! So 20 pounds and 20 shillings, which is 21 pounds! How much is 21 pounds in today's money? Um, 1900 British currency to GBP. No, not GPP. Um, the 200 year pound to dollar. No. No. Uh, this is hard to look up. Pounds sterling. Uh, to G B P. Ah, one pound sterling is one pound sterling. No, I want old money. Value of old Brit of old British money today. Fine, Google, I will be simple with you. Currency Converter, National Archives, Government UK, sure. Please select a year. 1900 exactly, please. Pounds, 21 pounds, which is equal to 20 guineas, because one guinea is... One guinea is a pound and a shilling. So 20 guineas, 20 pounds and 20 shillings. 20 shillings is a pound, there we go. 1,641 pounds. I'm gonna use that a lot in this trial, I think. That's an inconsiderable sum of money, you, I'm sure you'd agree. Ugh. Well, what of it? Let's suppose Mr. McGilded were to be found guilty of murder. What would become of your debt in that case? Hmm. These documents state that the loan agreement is forged between two individual parties. Therefore, the creditor, the defendant here, to be sentenced to a capital punishment. All outstanding debts were owed to him, which were owed to him, would be annulled. They would cease to exist. Cease to exist? Mr. Fairplay? It is not the case that you claimed in your testimony to have seen something you never in fact saw. Is it not the case that you claimed in your testimony to have seen something you never in fact saw in a devious attempt to annul your debt of 20 guineas to the defendant? Gah! Gah! Oh dear, oh dear, oh Mr. Bruce Fairplay. Yes, Millar. Yes, Millar. Uh, 
Ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> Let me ask you again. And be aware that your answer may have most serious implications upon your future, sir. Grr. Did you or did you not see the precise moment at, the, at which the defendant is alleged to have brushed a knife into the victim? Your silence speaks volumes. You did not tell the truth in your testimony. I'm a banker. Yeah, all right. Let's not make a melodrama out of this. Perhaps I did overstate the truth a pinch. A pinch? But it makes no difference. I definitely remember seeing blood on Mr. McGilded's hands. Both of them. Objection! Objection! And yet, only one of the defendant's gloves, which we have here as evidence, is stained. Grr, so you keep saying. I... I wonder if I might be allowed to speak, sir. Go ahead, Mr. First. Well, the thing is, I think I also remember seeing it myself, as it happens. Seeing what? The blood, sir. On the assailant's hands. I think... Yes. I, I'm almost sure it was on both of his hands, not just one. What? What? Hmm. It appears that we're going to need further testimony from all you witnesses. This time, I would like to know precisely what you did and what you did not see. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Yes. Mr. Naruhodo, this is good news. The course of the trial seems to have shifted slightly at last. Yes, I might finally have a chance to turn things around here. What the witnesses really saw. There were blood on both hands of the assailant. I sincerely and distinctly remember that. However, I suppose you might say that I didn't see the exact moment of the, st the stabbing transpired, if that matters. I remember seeing the knife, and I remember seeing both the attacker's hands with blood on them. I didn't actually see anything myself. No, not until I he heard that scream. Anyway, the fact remains, there can't have been anyone else inside that carriage, or we'd all be seen. <laughs> I love the wig. Oh. Well, lo and behold. Wait, what's the actual phrase? Lo and behold. Lo and behold. Wait, what's lo short for? Lo and behold. I say that phrase a lot. Well, not, maybe not a lot, but like, lo and behold. Lo and behold. I don't know. I might, I might look that oh, Let's look that one up as well. Lo, oh, lo and behold. An archaic word used to draw an attention to an interesting or amazing event. Look. Derived from look. Middle English, loke. That was before the great bow shift, I guess. And English, la? Okay, whatever. In fact, in... Truth of fact, not one of you was witness to the crucial moment the crime was perpetrated. I... I apologise, me lord. But... but honestly... Ah, uh, there was no one else inside that carriage. 
man's hands were covered in blood. Uh, so much incriminating evidence is tantamount to saying we saw the man do it. That's really not what testimony is about. Let us examine the interior of the omnibus once more. The victim's fresh blood is clearly visible on the seat, corroborating the witnesses' accounts. Why is it still fresh, three days after the incident? Huh? In other words, there is no substantial, nor significant, change in the facts of the case. Let me see the photo again. How the fuck did the blood get on the seat? I'm sorry. It's not blood. Well, it has to be. There's no way he would lie about that. The police would have inspected that. Scotland Yard. Very well. Your cross-examination, please, Counsel. Yes, my lord. Right, this is the last cross-examination of this stream. Oh, hurry up. Da -da 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 -da. It's an allegro one, too. There was blood on both hands of the assailant. I sincerely and distinctly remember that. Hold it! No! The evidence tells us otherwise. We have the gloves the defendant was wearing on the night in question in the court record. I'm well aware of that, sir, but nevertheless, I know what I saw, and I stand by it. The man had blood on both his hands. It's defiant, even in the face of hard evidence. He's steadfastly refusing to admit that he might be mistaken about what he saw, but why? It's because he's right. It was somebody else's gloves. Your reasoning is dire. One hand or two, the salient point remains unchanged. Minutes after the grim crime, the victim's blood dripped guilty from the accused's fingers. Then how do you explain this discrepancy? Come on, you should have been aggressive there. However, I, uh, hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Don't try to downplay this! Whether or not you saw the exact moment of the crime is a matter of fundamental importance, as you may well know. Ugh, but... But crying out loud, we all know that no one else could possibly have done it. I was just... Uh, to save us all some time. You have a loan of 20 guineas outstanding with the defendant, do you not? <laughs> Had you hoped to release yourself from that financial burden by ensuring the defendant was found guilty? I... Well... Uh, that's not entirely... Not... What I was hoping for. Uh, I... I just lost a little guinea or... Ten when I back the wrong horse in the derby, that's all. I was going to win it all back. There's a fixture this weekend that's a sure thing. <laughs> Why is this banker a gambler? Aren't gamblers supposed to be smart with money? <sighs> a little guinea or ten. I'm a banker. No one bats an eye if I borrow a little spending money for the weekend. Spending habits are quite pathetic. I think you may have revealed rather more about your character than you bargained for, sir. <laughs> the witness's scruples are not on trial here. Proceed to the next witness. Is that really how it's supposed to work? Hold it! Hold it! You definitely saw that too. Blood on both hands. Oh, yes, sir. I mean, I know what you're going to say. Only one of Miss McGilded's gloves had any sign of blood on it. That's right. The thing is, as far as I remember, sir, when I looked down and saw Mr. McGilded sitting, sitting beside the other fellow, I don't believe he was wearing any gloves, sir wasn't wearing these gloves. That's correct, sir. I saw the blood on both his bare hands quite clearly. It's a 
true that the dark coloured stain and the dark leather gloves wouldn't have been easy to see. I should point out that the police officer who apprehended the accused on the night in question reported that there was no trace of blood on Mr. McGilded's gloves' hands. There wasn't blood on his hands! Hmm, this is puzzling indeed. This must be significant somehow, I'm sure of it. That's the contradiction right there! Dude. I, I didn't actually see anything myself, no, not until I heard that scream. Hold it! Hold it! You didn't see anything? Oh, yes sir. That is to say, no sir, I d d didn't. Very sorry about what I s said before, sir. Very sorry, yes. It, it was very wrong of me to m make up stories and so say I saw him stab the man. Wouldn't you agree, sir? <laughs> I know what you're insinuating, but I certainly wasn't making up stories. Still, to say you saw nothing isn't right either, is it? No, sir. I saw n nothing at all. Mr. Beppo, you were driving your horses. At the very least, you, um, must have enjoyed a good view of London streets, no? <laughs> oh, please. You didn't even see that. It was so cold that night, you see. It was all I could do to keep from passing out, sir. Yes, my head was fairly frozen sorry, solid. Sorry to say, sir. But seem prudent. To avoid travel on the last omnibus service of London's cold winter night. Repo! <laughs> anyway, the fact remains. There can't have been anyone else inside that carriage, or we'd all have been seen. Hold it! And everything you saw of the incident was through the skylight of the roof on the omnibus. That's right, it was fiercely cold that night. The glass wasn't frosted over glass wasn't frosted over. Oh yes! I remember it, I was shivering. It was so bitter. Which rather begs the question of why the pair of you were sitting on the roof deck in the first place. Well, I don't know about this young fellow, but I couldn't enter the cabin. Oh, why not? It was locked from the inside. I tried knocking, but no one opened the door. It was locked. That's right. A man has a public bus service, for pity's sake. That's not what I call fair play. Yes, I had exactly the same experience. I tried knocking, but the gent inside just gestured at me to clear off. So I had no choice but to climb up to the roof deck and look down longingly into the warm cabin below. But I can assure you I was just looking down. I was glaring, long and hard. And that's precisely why I can tell you with absolute certain confidence. I'm a banker, oh. That if anyone else was in at all inside the cabin, I would have noticed. Unequivocal, I would say. Not sure about these two witnesses. Could they really have seen everything inside the cabin through the skylight? They might not have been able to. There's only a lamp on one side. Allow me to confirm one thing, Mr. Fairplay. You were riding on this omnibus. You were riding this omnibus and witnessed the events inside the cabin through the skylight in the roof of the upper deck. Is that right? I'm a banker. Oh. That's right, yes. In that case, there is a portion of the cabin interior that would have been out of sight from you. What? By golly, really? Really? Obviously, at this stage, stage, we can't say for sure. The possibility cannot be denied. But at the time of the incident, there could have been another passenger in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Objection! Objection! Enough hypothetical meandering. 
my nip and me's friend. Prosecution demands that you substantiate your claims. After all, the scene of the crime is here, in the flesh. Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's demand. Demand? Demand? There we go, not demand, I'm not from up north. Oh, those, those disgusting northerners, they are, they are, they are savage. They are barbarous. Be from the north. Oh, will identify the area on this cross-sectional plan of the omnibus. Where exactly in the omnibus are you suggesting this potential, potential extra passenger could have been situated? Take that. Take that! Both rows of seats on the roof face in the direction of travel. Whereas the seats in the enclosed cabin face each other. Which means... The visible part of the cabin, which passengers on the roof deck can see through the skylight, is as I've drawn here. Oh. That's right, my lord. As you can see, the seat opposite the one on which the victim and his attacker were sitting is obscured from view. In other words, if someone had been sitting on that seat, it's quite possible that these witnesses would have been completely unaware of it. Gar! Objection! Objection! It's quite possible some phantom was sitting there. You Nipponese have a forbidding habit of obscuring the truth with ambiguity. I concur with the prosecution's rejoinder. In a British court of law, evidence is paramount. I cannot entertain this conjecture, counsel. That is, unless you're able to put a name to this mysterious passenger to whom you allude. Allude. Okay. I'm going to look again at this. Because I only looked in one of the seats. But I think we're going to have to present that my client is the mysterious passenger. Because in fact the passenger they saw, the killer, is not my client. Okay, this one has a handle. And this is the one underneath. This one doesn't have a handle, okay. Why am I even bothering to do this? I could have just closed it from inside. Can you, Mr. Narahodo? I honestly don't know. Who could it have been? Who could have been in the other seat? Which was out of sight from the witnesses on the roof deck. Have an inkling. I understand, my lord. The defense would like to. Yay! In this game, they spell defense the English way. The defense would like to put forward a name. That's making me so happy because I'm so sick of reading defense with an S. You are a fool. That response was a desperate attempt by a man who has no notion of his own limitations. A toast to hard lessons not yet learned. Let us not delay, Council. The defence is still to name the passenger in the other seat. This could be it. This could be the chance I've been waiting for to turn the trial in my favour. On that night, the night of the murder, the person occupying the seat in the omnibus cabin that was obscured from view was... My client! It can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be. It's my client. Take that! Take that! Gotcha. The passenger in the enclosed cabin that the witness on the roof deck failed to see has to have been Mr. Magnus McGilded. Mc... Mr. McGilded? What are you talking about, Council? That's the name of the defendant. 
Objection! Objection! <laughs> he throws that away in like ten different ways like that. If I desecrate this chamber by smashing my hallowed chalice, do forgive the discourtesy. Lord Van Dyke. People talk of those tiny island nations in the Far East as having a learning and culture. Having a learning and culture of their own. But I see they use the terms ill-advisedly. What are you trying to say? Let me explain in terms that even a student of an artless backwater such as yourself might understand. Wow, that's a huge insult, talking to the, the nation of art. When the bloody scene unfolded, the victim and his assailant were sitting side by side. Multiple witnesses have attested to this fact. It is the very premise on which the case is built. Objection! Objection! I do not deny this, but that premise may be wrong. What? The victim really was sitting beside Mr. McGill, did? It creates an inconsistency that can't be reconciled in any way. What inconsistency, Count Shaw? The defendant's gloves, my lord. Both witnesses made the same testimony. They claim there was no blood. There was blood on both hands of the person sitting next to the victim. Objection! Objection! Yet we know the truth to be otherwise. Only one glove bears the gory remains, unless you have some explanation to this. Objection! Objection! The point is, even in the face of this irrefutable evidence, both witnesses have maintained their stance. Yes, their testimony re remains unchanged. Exactly! They both adamantly swear that they clearly remember seeing blood on the hands of the assailant. In short, their memory of events is correct, and their testimony reveals the truth. It was somebody else sitting out beside the victim that night, a third party, or a fifth party, we are yet to identify. And the victim's blood was on that passenger's hands, both of them. Objection! Objection! And who was this third party? Obviously, the true culprit. Extraordinary! Order! 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 What exactly are you postulating? Objection! Objection! The defense's postulation is just that nothing more than conjecture. The witnesses have clearly stated that they saw the accused. Objection! Objection! But when elaborating on his testimony, Mr. Fairplay said two of them were wearing hats and I couldn't exactly make out their faces. Hmm. Yes. The tops of their heads were obscured by the roof. I could see the rest of them, though. Yes, that's right. Both gents were most certainly hatted. Hatters do tend to notice such things, sir. I'm a math hatter myself. And what particular styles of hat do the two gentlemen sport, Mr. Fra, Mr. First? I'm afraid I... I don't remember. Do you call yourself a hatter? The style of hat makes no difference. There was no third passenger in that cabin. How can you be sure? If Ryunosuke was banker and more experienced, he would argue back saying like, Look at the defendant's hat! You can see it is quite distinct! Surely, if you had noticed that hat on that day, you would have remembered! How can you be sure? Because if the hat be the accused, Mr. McGilded, would undoubtedly have offered to depose the fact. What? That there was no third passenger in that cabin, as if there had been. If you recall, the defendant claims he was asleep. Unless, that is, 
You are proposing an even more preposterous explanation. <laughs> but the accused failed even to notice the presence of the true culprit in the very cabin in which he travelled. Ugh! He's right! If there was another person travelling in the enclosed cabin on the of, of the omnibus, it's inconceivable that Mr. McGilded would have been unaware of it. Oh dear. There is clearly a simple solution. There is clearly a simple solution to this problem. Bring the accused, Mr. McGilded, to the stand. Well, what say you, Counsel? The prosecution objects, my lord. On what ground? As a suspect, he will have already made a full statement to the police. But, but what if there's some reason why he's unable to speak freely? Magnus McGilded is no uneducated ruffian. If it is indeed, if it indeed turns out the man has been withholding information, you can be sure it will have been a most deliberate act. Counsel for the defence, what is your opinion? My lord, should we ask Mr. McGilded to testify or not? I'm going to leave it there. Is this the telling the truth thing? I think it is, right? I can check that actually. I just saved. No! I think it's the same. Give it four more bars, maybe eight. Yeah, it's the same. There you go. Alright then. That's the end for my escapades tonight, and I shall go back to Britain. Ah, Mr. Naruhodo, I wonder if I am in the audience of this trial, watching on to see your magnificent courtroom debut here in my great nation of England. <laughs>